Why, hello. I didn't see you there. It's not like, uh, have this planned or anything. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Will and his channel. I am Will. This is my channel. And today we're talking Konica FS1, uh, Lomography, Potsdam 100, and also pushing, pushing the film. The Konica FS1 was released in 1979, and it was known as the first SLR camera with a motor drive. Listen to this sweet thing. Listen to this. Look at that. Beautiful motor drive built right into the camera. You didn't have to get no goofy bottom attachment. And that was kind of the main selling point of this camera with a lot of its advertising. The camera takes four AA batteries. This camera is not mechanical at all. Will not fire without batteries. Zero any mechanical anything. That might be one of the reasons why I've noticed these cameras are so cheap on eBay is just because it seems to me that these cameras have electronics that do die and obviously when they die you cannot fix the camera. So hey go pick one of these up on eBay. They are super duper cheap but they're really nice. I mean they do shutter speeds basically from bulb to a thousand. They have a really amazing light meter inside that you'll see is actually pretty accurate. I rated it for 200 and then pushed the film as we'll get into later. I pretty much shot the entire thing on the shutter priority mode so I pretty much just let this thing do all of the hard part, you know, how to get the good exposure. And I, I thought it did a really good job, to be honest. You'll see in some of these photos. One thing to note, uh, do not use rechargeable batteries in this camera because supposedly the variable voltage of the rechargeable batteries can actually fry the electronics faster. Something to look out for. Potsdam 100 is one of Lomography's Kino films. Not entirely sure what that means but it essentially is kind of one of their like lower, less grain films because it's 100 speed and uh, they kind of market it as sort of like a more cinematic film which I think is actually not that far off because some of these pictures that I took after very little editing I mean they look like they come straight out of a 1950s noir film so if you're trying to get really contrasty black and white photos I would actually recommend this Potsdam film and maybe even do what I did and try pushing it to stop and you'll get extremely, extremely dark blacks but I would say still stuff that's kind of recoverable there's a lot of shadow, a lot of detail in these shadows that is pretty recoverable if you pull it up from the darks and then I'm briefly just going to discuss pushing film um, so basically the premise of pushing film, right, is that so if let's say the film is a hundred speed film, right what you do is you would set your ISO in camera at 200 or just remember that you're going to be treating it like a 200 ISO film. And basically what you're doing is you are underexposing the film by one whole stop. Meaning that when you go to the dev or whoever, you know, basically when you dev your film or whoever you send your film off to, you have to let them know that they have to leave it in the juice for a little bit longer that way that it'll uh, develop properly and you can get your highlights and stuff pulled out of the film. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with really lame underexposed film. Let's, uh, let's get into some of these photos and just kind of discuss what I was thinking about when I was shooting this stuff. Hey, how's it going everybody? We're here at my desk and we've got the cam over here, we've got cam over here, and we're going to be looking at some of the stuff here on my laptop. So here is my Lightroom catalog with all my Potsdam photos on it and I'm kind of just going to go through some of the, you know, some of the stuff that I shot, see what you think. So first thing I did, these are out of order and how I imported them by the way, or scanned them I should say. Uh, just kind of just bear with me as I click around but basically the first thing I did as soon as I got the camera put the roll in I realized it was too dark and I realized that I was gonna push my 100 speed film to 200 right out the bat never shot a single photo with this camera just let Jesus take the wheel on that one and I uh, here I am kind of just let it figure out its own little thing so I was at my house and I took some photos of my cat it's kind of a cool picture and uh, the thing that really impresses me, uh, first of all, I'm gonna stop talking about the camera because the camera does not really matter at this point. We're here talking about the film. And I shot all of this on a, the 40 mil 1.8 pancake Konica AR mount. Anyways, took some pictures of my cat here, did a little photo shoot. I'm very impressed with the amount of contrast that you get with this film. Um, if you wanna look at my Negative Lab Pro settings, I actually turned the contrast down because the photo was so contrasty. It was really, really awesome. Super impressed with this stuff. Picture of my cat, picture of my cat. Oh my, I mean, look at this face. Well, look at the, look how cinematic, honestly, some of this contrast is. It's just ridiculous. Extremely black, got the 
beam of light coming through. I just think it's really funny the way that uh, it displays the image, I guess. The way the image characteristic of the film is, you know? Big old chubbo. Getting a little photo shoot. I don't know, I thought this was a particularly good portrait. I just love the contrast. Love the contrast. You're just gonna hear me repeat that over and over again. The contrast with this black and white 100 speed Kino film is phenomenal. And then on top of that, I pushed it, which is supposedly um, a way to get more contrast out of your photos. I wouldn't really know because this is the first roll of film I've ever pushed, um, but yeah. And that's pretty much it for the cat photos. So another thing that I kind of did was I took a lot of photos uh, of my girlfriend and also my sister, kind of just around the house type photos, you know, which is like another one of the reasons why I was pushing the film to 200, because if you've ever shot 100 speed film, like indoors, no, it's a no-no. It's very, very hard to shoot 100 speed film indoors unless it is just extremely, extremely lit. Just kind of went and took some pictures of me and my girl. Got this kind of really interesting one that I like where I'm out of focus and she's in focus. I wonder if I use the self-timer for that. Does the Konica FS1 have a self-timer? Mm, no, there's no, there's no self-timer. So maybe I had my little sister take this picture of me and my girl. Me and my, my girl and my sister is kind of Brett looking at the table. Um, Lots of, lots of grain here. Uh, it has to do with the fact that it was just ridiculously underexposed. Like I said, higher speed film. Got a photo of my girlfriend here. I really like the way that we kind of have this fall off from really bright to gray to just completely dark in the back over here. I think this must have been at nighttime when I was shooting this stuff with just the house lights on. Got a little interaction. A little picture of my sister browsing the iPad. A little portrait. God, you gotta love, uh, gotta love some of the Konica bokeh back here. It's just makes amazing bokeh balls. And then you also gotta love over here, clearly this is a fingerprint or something from when I was scanning. Uh, if you're wondering why my little sister has makeup on like this, is she's uh, kind of an aspiring, aspiring anime cosplayer. So this is from a cosplay she was doing. Picture, just random junk inside my parents' house. Is this a hair or is this a scanning error? Oh, great. Well, there's a giant hair for you. Sometimes it feels like I dump extra hair onto my scanner before I scan these photos. It's kind of a cool picture of my girlfriend. Just, I really, like I said, I really like the way, this is a very cinematic, dramatic film. It really has interesting light characteristics with the light and the darks are just so, so freaking dark. And just the very gradual, kind of like going from dark to, excuse me, not gradual, going from dark to light. It's just really, really cool contrast. I really like it. I'm probably gonna pick up some more of this uh, this Kino film in the future. These are some shots that you kind of saw in the beginning of the video. Um, I sort of was just walking around, I was at the gas station, and I saw, um, you know, just some random, random construction equipment. And I thought it might just be kind of cool. Just take some random pictures of this stuff for the video. I think the highlight right here is just the picture of the cockpit on one of these things. Um, I don't know, the detail is just really cool. I like that you can kind of zoom in and really kind of like see some interesting lines and there is a lot of detail for days in this film, like four days. Had I not pushed it, in other words, it was all underexposed, I think that technically I would have gotten a lot more detail out of these pictures. I just, I had to push it. It was just, you know, you start doing one roll, you gotta push the whole roll. So that's just how it is. I really like this picture of my girlfriend and my sister. It's just very dramatic. Like, I honestly have no idea what it was they were talking about, but my girlfriend just looks like either she had a premonition or saw something crazy or... I have no idea, but I think it's a really cool picture. This is a picture of some random trash that I saw just kind of laying on the ground. Um, I think this kind of can show off, you know, the detail really in, the, in this film. You've just got some really dark areas. You kind of see how it goes sort of gray here. You can kind of, I mean, you know exactly what's in this picture and you can sort of zoom in all the way around to kind of look exactly at what kind of a mess this crap was. Random parking lot picture, not super great. Tried to see if I could get some birds in flight. Um, I'm not really sure. I think the metering was a little messed up on this one because I remember I was letting the camera meter for this entire thing. It basically has a uh, shutter speed priority mode. And uh, clearly I think it under it overexposed this a little bit. Kind of a really interesting picture, I think personally, of uh, just the parking lot at the Northgate Market over there. 
And uh, yeah, I don't know, just some interesting things to look at. But yeah, so that's pretty much it, you know? That was kind of it, a little bit of a roll review, a little bit of a camera review. Um, if you, I'm gonna speak on that just a little bit more. This camera is really, really great. If you're already invested in the AR mount lens lineup like I am, um, it was an amazing cop. These things are literally going for around $30. The bodies are going around for around $30 on eBay. And um, I mean, this thing is a straight up super, super competent camera. I mean, on the, I think it's on par with something like a Nikon F4. I mean, it has the motor drive, it has pretty much auto settings. It doesn't auto focus, but uh, as you can see, I mean, I left the entire thing on the auto metering mode and it seemed to get the exposures properly almost every single time, which is just fantastic. Roll review, um, I think the roll is great. I think this is a really fun film. Um, I don't shoot a lot of black and white, so I have a hard time contrasting it with other stuff, but it's definitely a punchier film, black and white wise, than I'm usually used to shooting, which is cool. And, um, and yeah, I would maybe put it more on par with something like an HP5 for just how contrasty it is. It's not like an orthochromatic film or something where you're getting, you know, half of the color spectrum cut out. It's, um, it's overall, it's a pretty, pretty sweet film and I dig it. Tune in next week. We are going to be shooting, what are we doing next week? Next week, we are going to go look at some photos that I took uh, of me and my girlfriend when we went to Julian during the snowstorm about a month ago from whenever this video was published. So stick around for that. If you haven't already, maybe, you know, give your boy William a like, maybe comment on this video, and uh, subscribe if you're not already, if you want to get some more film-based content. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. And uh, catch you in the next video.